Guys, we're back. Another episode of Hashtag Ask Live Lean TV, episode number... 20? We made it to 20. Is it 20? It oh. is 20. I never even thought of that. I was just like, while I was saying that, I was thinking, what episode are we on? And 20 episodes. Two zero. We're asking you guys' questions, and we're just so appreciative and grateful that you guys offer all your questions, because without your questions, we wouldn't even have anything to talk about. That's right. So if you guys do want to get your questions answered, just because you ask them today, it's not necessarily like they're going to get answered this weekend, because we have a backlog, but we do need your questions for uh, future episodes. So if you just use the hashtag AskLiveLeanTV, and put them out on Twitter. So that's the best way to get in contact. But I think this show is actually a Snapchat dominated Q&A. Oh, really? Yeah, Snapchat has been blowing up for but my- I prefer Twitter, so. Yeah, but I mean, Snapchat has been okay. yeah, blowing up way. for me. Like a lot of you guys are following my snaps. I love it. So yeah. um, if you have been following all the behind the scenes stuff, all of the stuff that doesn't make our vlogs, doesn't make our channel, go follow me at Brad Guthrie on Snapchat. Yes. I've been posting a lot of baby related stuff. Yeah, what's your Not Snapchat? Not so much fitness. I'm Snappy Jesse on Snapchat. We'll put that down here below as well if you guys want to go check out Jessica. Uh, so let's get to the questions. Like you guys, uh, or what we said before, we don't know the questions that are being asked. They just get sent to us and we just flow with them. I think that's what makes the show a little bit better is when we're kind of caught off guard with some questions um, and we can answer them straight up. So let's just hope there's no mm -hmm. questions on vegan questions. Or uh, breast milk questions. <laughs> yeah, or questions about our pet peeves about each other. <laughs> All right, let's jump into the show, guys. First question from Snapchat. Everything's going to be from Snapchat. From Sandra Oladen says, Hi, Brad. One of your recommendations is to eat higher glycemic foods like bananas and sweet potatoes to post-workout. But does that mean the body is burning the carbs and not fat? Can we still be in fat-burning mode? Like when... Yeah, so like still be in fat burning mode if you eat that after your workouts? Yeah, so okay, I'll answer this one. So yeah. the way that it works when you're eating post-workout, so when you're working out, you're burning muscle glycogen. So that's the sugar that's stored in your muscles and in your liver. So when you're working out, you're burning into that. So that's why we need carbs to go back in to break you out of that catabolic mode. When I say catabolic, it means like muscle breakdown. So when your muscle stores are full, you can be more anabolic by building muscle. That's what we want to do after your workout. So that sugar that's going into your body post-workout, you have that space in your muscle glycogen, your liver glycogen to fill back up again and not spill over into the fat cells. So yes, you're burning fat um, post-workout by still, still fat eating fat sugar, you're yeah. still in a fat burning mode. But if you're really obese or you're highly insulin resistant, you can get away with not having carbs post workout. So it's. Or if your goal is fat loss and instead of muscle building, then we would recommend you can skip those carbs. Yeah, I mean, right? Well, if your goal is fat loss, extreme fat loss, I would say yes. Get like p carbs post workout aren't necessary. But if your goal is like body recomp, so you want to burn fat and kind of build muscle, um, and you don't have that much fat, like I'm talking like 100 pounds of fat to lose, then yes, you get those carbs into your uh, post-workout because you don't want to be losing muscle. You want to be maintaining right. muscle mass as well. Exactly. Really, that's the main reason for having your carbs post-workout is to assist you with muscle building so that you can burn more fat throughout the day. So it's not necessarily that you're burning carbs only at, at that time, you know, it's really more about the big picture of things mm -hmm. because you guys know to get lean, you need to build lean muscle on your body and that turns you into a 24 seven fat burning machine machine. So don't worry necessarily about like when you're burning fat or when you're burning carbs. It's really like try to look at the big picture of it. And that's the reason why we recommend carbs post lifting because it's yeah. for muscle repair. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Okay. So on to the next one, Dolo Moses. Junior, 92, 92. <laughs> on Snapchat. Good job, bro. If possible, could you answer life questions like moving out of state, like that stuff? Is, like, I don't really understand the question. Good job, bro. If you like, how do you move out of state, or how do you? Well, I mean, I moved out of country. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't really understand life the question. question, but if the yeah. question was like, um, how do you move? Basically, you got to decide what you want to do in life and yeah. what, what's most important to you. And if the goal of moving somewhere else to obtain like a job or to meet the girl of your dreams or to actually live with the girl of your dreams, um, 
that should overpower sense, yeah. any problem that you have with moving. Like, I mean, when I moved from Canada to the US, I moved with one suitcase. Like I left everything yeah. behind me. You gotta understand you guys. sold all of your furniture. Like before I moved yeah. to the US, like I owned a big house. I owned a house full of furniture. I had like, I had a lot of stuff. You had a gym in the basement. I had, I had you my had own. get rid of equipment. Like I had my own rack. personal training studio yeah. in my house if you guys uh, are with me for a long time. So I had to get rid of yeah. a lot of things, but the end piece of it all was it's more important to be with the girl that I love to chase my dreams than to have all that stuff. That's just materialistic stuff. And like I keep saying guys, like as I've grown, as I've become more wise in my ways, I've been quickly learning that stuff, materialistic stuff is just holding you back. Yeah, and I don't know. I think that instead of just moving to move, like you didn't really give a reason why yeah. you want to move, like you should have a really good reason why. Like it's the same thing that we're always talking about with fitness. Like why do you need to go to the gym? Why do you need to eat healthier? Why do you want to move out of state? Like if you have a really good why that's driving you, then the hows, they just fall into yeah. place. So don't worry about how it's going to happen. Just worry about why it needs to happen. We were talking about that last night on yeah. our walk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like everything just seems to work out when your vision gets really clear. Uh, but if that didn't answer your question, uh, Dolo that's, Moses that's Jr., yeah, yeah, get back to me on that because um, you've got to be a little more clear on the question. Uh, next question on Snapchat from B Sardinelli 606 says, good sprints for burning that last bit of fat and build some lean muscle. Is that a question? Yeah. So what are some good sprints, good style sprints? Um, what do you like for sprinting? What's your modality? My favorite thing, it's just kind of like my go-to thing, is to, um, when I go to the track, I sprint the straightaway and I recover yeah. on the curve. And that's just kind of my favorite thing. Yeah. And that's basically an even interval. It's like, you know, 100 meters of sprint and then 100 meters recovery. Um, but obviously the sprint is much faster than the recovery. So I would say it's like maybe two to one ratio yeah. in time-wise. Um, I just really like that and then you can do an even number. I usually do 8 to 10, you know, depending on the day. So is it just continuous? Yeah, continuous. So that's... I'll sprint, recover, sprint, recover, and I'll do that eight times. So yeah. that's four laps around the track. So if you don't have access to a track or it's winter time and you can't train outside if you're at the treadmill, mm -hmm. you think about that on a treadmill. Um, what I would do on a treadmill, like when I used to train sprints in the winter time when I lived in, in Canada was it would be like a probably 30 second sprint on a treadmill and then 60 second minimum recovery. And when I say recovery, I mean you go from like, I was on max sprints so 12 miles per hour on an as incline fast as the treadmill can go. and then you turn, yeah, basically. Yeah. And then you turn it down as to about a three to a four. So you're just walking. Wouldn't you like lift and jump off? I would yeah. as well until, and then reduce the uh, until it slowed down. Yeah. And then you just do that and for 60 seconds. Yeah. But a lot of people, if you're not, um, you need more recovery than that. Like, so basically totally. if you're in sprinting, what I would recommend is you get a heart rate monitor and we'll include a heart rate monitor below. It's like an old school heart rate monitor that I still, it's my favorite one. Classic. It's like a classic one that's it's cheap now, but I got it way back, but we'll put a link if they still sell it down below and uh, do it based on heart rate zone. So if you don't know what the heart rate zone is, where your max and your min and where you should be, we'll put a link down. I got art articles and blog posts yeah, and videos on that. on that as well. Yeah. So we'll include that down below. But um, my favorite sprinting style is at the track and it's basically, it's a little bit different than you. I like going all out for that 100, 100 meter dash. And then basically I'll do the heart rate thing like I just talked about. Like I'll wait until my heart rate goes down. So that 100 meter dash is like, like 11 seconds it takes me. Mm -hmm. So basically I'll probably go again in 30 seconds. So I'll walk back to the starting so it's line. it's like almost three times as much rest as Yeah, it's three as times work. as much rest as work. Yeah. Rest is really important when it comes to sprints. Like you guys should not underestimate yeah. the importance of resting because if you don't rest, then your next interval is going to be real crappy. Yeah, you're, you're not, lose it. Your, your intensity is going to go down and you're just not getting as much then out of it. it's not an actual sprint. But for beginners, I would recommend do like a run walk interval and work your way up to sprinting because sprinting really does mean all all out yeah. like you know balls to the wall you can't talk you yeah, can't you talk you should not be able to carry conversation and if you are a beginner to sprinters check out my liveleansprint.com workout program we'll link that down below as well because yes. that has three phases to it so it basically is if you've never sprinted before in your life or you're brand new to fitness phase one and phase one a what phase one b is for you like it tells you like if you're overweight and you can't even run to the corner 
start there and it progressively builds you up with other phases where it's going to get you into a badass within 18 weeks. Yeah, but sprinting is definitely our um, favorite, our preferred way of running. Like we don't go on long runs, but we definitely do sprints. So. Yeah. That's, uh, high, we highly recommend that for you guys to help burn fat versus burn muscle. Okay, so Linda Wilmarth from Snapchat says, what do you guys think about the ketogenic diet? There's a guy on YouTube, Jason Wittrock, and he swears by it. Um, I, I, see, I've never heard of him. I've always spoken from experience, and I've <laughs> never done a ketogenic diet before, but I really believe that if you are really obese, or you're very highly in insulin resistant, meaning that your insulin is always high. So even um, when you're fasted, you haven't ate anything, when you wake up in the morning, your insulin is still high. So you're still storing, you know, you're, it's just going through your blood. Um, I would think a keto ketogenic diet is a very good thing for you to try. Is it easy? No because it's going to be such a shock to your system because a ketogenic diet is like no sugar at all. That's what it is. It's really restricted. It's yeah. very restricted. So it's a high fat. It's really high in fat and higher in protein because that's where your calories have to come from because right. there's no, no sugar in you it. You got to eat something. And honestly, give it a try. Um, I don't need to because I'm not at either of those ends where I, I'm at my insulin. I'm not like that insulin resistant and I'm not obese. So I can, you know, add in a little bit more carbs there, even though according, or according to many fitness people, I'm still low carb. So, um, how would a person know if they're insulin resistant? You gotta get like this, gonna, this question yeah, is gonna come up. To get the exact answer, you have to go see your doctor, and they mm -hmm. can do you know, you can get some blood work, they can done. get your blood work yeah. done and let you know. But you should know, like, if you've tried everything, and honestly, if you've tried everything, and honestly tried everything, that's what I'm trying to that, point. Yeah, that's, that's you have to actually do things like to completion, you can't just go on a ketogenic diet for one day and then come to the conclusion that it doesn't work. Yeah, you know? exactly. You need to like test it a little bit longer on yourself. We usually recommend you guys give yourself at least two week period of doing something different with your diet before you conclude if it works or doesn't work. Yeah, but it'd be interesting. Like I would be interested in testing it out on myself. Really? I would. Um, oh, yeah. it, it would be uh, a good... That means like no fruit, right? Yeah. And like certain vegetables are even out. But it would probably be just the fibrous vegetables, all greens, like, yeah. nothing sweet. No sweet potatoes, yeah. But I, I, think... but, I mean, I just love fat yeah, anyway, so it would be yeah, a lot easier for me to It'll do than for you. Me. Yeah. I just think when what word comes to mind when I hear ketogenic diet is like short term because I don't see anyone being able to sustain that long term. Like, what are you never gonna have birthday cake again? No, but that, like, no, you're. But so this is what the problem is. Like, it doesn't mean a hundred percent of the time. I guess so. Like, I'll be honest with you guys. This is not our expertise. It's just not, like veganism's not our right. expertise. <laughs> <laughs> we don't follow like any diets, any like real you know diets. We show you guys what we eat and what yeah. works for us. We know what works for us we and call what works it for other clients. the live lean diet. Yeah, but it's not a diet. It's like, you can't even call it that because it doesn't have like a box of like, here's what you do and don't well, do. No. It's more if, flexible than that. If you actually look at the definition of diet, it's a way of eating. Yeah, I know, right? So the, I know, the, the, but the, just the way that the word diet has become perceived, I feel like yeah. it means like a box that you yeah. stay in, you know? For a short period of time. Yeah. Okay, next question from Snapchat from Hulk Smash says, I try and eat as much high welfare meat as I can, such as free range and organic, as I believe it's something, if something is going to die for me to eat it, it should be treated with respect and care. What is your outlook on animal welfare and are there benefits of high welfare versus low welfare meat sources? Benefits? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we agree with you. Um, I don't know about the welfare thing. Like, how do you actually know how an animal is treated? No, there's, there's standards. Really? Yeah, like... Uh, so when you're shopping for meat, it says this one was murdered brutally and this one wasn't... Well, it doesn't obviously be that blatant. <laughs> I don't think it's... It's grass-fed yeah, grass cattle fed, but that are doesn't... roaming around. They're not stuck in a, in a little box like this where they're... Right. I'm just not going to get into it, but they're just, they can't move. So, I mean, that's more humane where the animals are actually out feeding. They're out yeah. getting air. They're out doing everything. they got sunlight coming down on them. Right. Definitely same with difference. Same with free-range chickens. Chickens yeah. are out running around doing their thing. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely, yeah, there's definitely something to it. But from a health perspective, 100%, like if the foods that you're eating, if they're not eating what they were intended to eat, that's being passed on to you. So what I mean by that is when you feed, when you eat... Um, meat that's been eating grains and soy corn, and corn yeah. then they're that they're eating the farmers are feeding them that because that fattens them up quickly 
And they're also pumping them full of hormones and pumping them full of other things that then when you eat that gets passed on to you. Right. So there is absolutely 100%. Um, it's not only, we, we, don't, we eat grass fed, we eat free range and we're inorganic and mm -hmm. we do it because we do want to make sure that the animals that we're eating, just like you said, um, they're being treated well, but there's a 100% a health benefit there as well. Like high, better sources of fats, so CLA, omega-3s in grass fed beef versus grain fed, they don't have that because they're not eating the stuff that they should be eating and yeah. the foods and they I should be eating. And I do think that there is a flavor difference too. Definitely. Like, have you guys ever had homegrown tomatoes versus store-bought tomatoes? Yeah. It's like night and day. I feel like it's the same thing with meat and eggs. Like you can actually taste a difference between organic grass-fed steak yeah. and not, you know. And like eggs? like Yeah, eggs are my, totally, the color is different. Well, crack the shell. Yeah, the shell, like <laughs> strength is different. It's big like, time. Like you crack a conventional egg and it's like you could blow on it and it would just shatter and yeah. then you take a organic one and you crack it and you got to like really beat on it so just you know <laughs> think about those things guys like it, it's worth the money it's worth it definitely is worth the money find the money save the money put it towards your food as opposed to buying a Ferrari <laughs> Ferrari yeah <laughs> Okay, so um, Rachel Borer on Snapchat says, what is your top 10 favorite podcasts? Top 10, wow. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, that's too many. Um, I don't listen to that many. I don't listen many. to that many, yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to give you the ones that I do listen to. I listen to um, Lewis Howes, so School of Greatness. Um, I listen to the uh, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk's podcast. I don't listen to that many, but I do. I listen to podcasts every day, but they come in so frequently. I only stick to you know, three, two or three of them. Yeah, I can't imagine having 10 favorites, that's a lot. So if <laughs> you guys, so that's a good segue though, if you guys are watching this, this is also a podcast as well if you didn't know. So go over to iTunes or go over to Stitcher if you use a, another kind of phone that doesn't have iTunes and listen to us as you work out, as you walk your dog, as you're in the car, when you're feeding your baby, whatever you're doing, listen to us and leave a review over there as well. Okay. Cisco Balls says, top salsas and hot sauces for each of you. Also, ever bottle or can your own creations? <laughs> uh, top salsas is basically, I don't have a top, well, I mean, I always buy it from Costco, Costco salsa, but I yeah. always <laughs> look at the ingredients in salsas yes. because some salsas are going to have canola oil, soybean oil sugar. in it, they'll have sugar added into it. Um, so always when you're buying salsa, look at the ingredients. So the stuff that I buy from Costco is an organic one and it's all just natural whole foods. So there's nothing else in there. Hot sauces. I like um, sriracha. Yeah, sriracha is a good one. But line. I've really, I haven't used sriracha on its own in a little bit because I've actually buy it in a mustard form now. There's a mustard sriracha. Oh yeah, sriracha, we also have regular sriracha. But which yeah, is, you use that all the time. I always use mustard on my stuff. So it's like if I'm putting mustard on it, I might as well have the sriracha in it already. So, and, and it's a... Yeah, sriracha mustard, it's good. And no, I've never created my own. Yeah, I've never made my own hot sauce. I have made my own salsa. And did you say tomato sauce or no? No, just hot salsas and hot sauces. But I've also made my own like tomato marinara sauce. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but never like, I don't know. I'm not much for spicy. Like I'm not a real like spicy food lover. Yeah, I never used to be, but then I yeah. started and I love it now. Yeah, you do use that sriracha yeah. mustard a lot. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would say that your favorites are the same as mine. And you know, like when we're talking about the ingredients being really clean on this stuff, um, when you're buying it frequently and regularly and it's in your diet all the time, that's why it's so important to have like no sugar, yeah, no that's good point. oil and stuff. But when you're eating out and stuff, don't like freak out about it. You know, you don't have to be like so particular about things when they're once in a while. But when it's like a staple in your diet, that's when it matters. Yeah. Okay, next question on uh, Snapchat from Apexorect for Eva. <laughs> Apexor. <laughs> um, after a workout, what kind of carbs should be consumed? I hear the carbs from fruit will only restore liver glycogen, not muscle glycogen. Also, if you're trying to build muscle but remain lean at the same time, should you really be pur purposely consuming carbs after your workout? What vegetables are worth logging the calories for? Okay. So fruit, sugar is fructose. That gets stored in your liver, not necessarily in your muscle cells. Okay. The answer to your question is yes, have fruit in there, but you should also have some glucose in there as well. Um, coming from what I like is maple, maple syrup, syrup yeah. honey. Um, so that, that that's, would be the answer to those questions. So then you're not only are you right. filling your liver cells, but your muscle cells, which is the important part as well. So get that sort of uh, carb in there. Right, so we do recommend fruit post-workout. Um, also, if you're trying and the to fruit, build... And the fruit is like a banana typically, yeah. or a pineapple would be the two that 
or mango. And if you're trying to build muscle and remain lean at the same time, should you be purposely consuming carbs? Yes. And that goes back yeah. to the previous question that we talked about earlier in this episode was about, you know, seeing the, the big picture because the main thing for getting lean is building lean muscle. Yeah. That's going to help you burn fat in the long run and later on and everything. So it's not so much about like what you're burning at the time. It's like about your... Yeah. total picture so yes that's why we consume carbs post-workout and then what vegetables are worth logging the calories for carrots sweet potato what vegetables oh yeah yeah okay so yeah you guys know that most vegetables are considered free foods and we don't log the calories for those but there are some vegetables like the starchy ones yeah. that do count um carrots i don't necessarily count because i don't eat so much of them yeah like, like the amount is small enough if you wanted to really like dial it in i would say yes yeah but i personally in my experience have never logged carrots yeah and like when i was doing fitness competition and stuff i wouldn't have carrots on my menu and if i did i would have logged them and I would have probably used them as a sweet potato replacement, but I would usually choose sweet potato instead. Yeah. That is one that you also Definitely. do log. So potatoes. Um, pota yeah, white potatoes for sure. And um, that's else? really like the only well, one. Well, other types of squash, like a winter squash or, yeah, or butternut honestly, squash. Yeah, honestly, like I've never logged that either for, for like... Yeah, but you don't eat it daily. No, I don't. But if I was yeah. and I was tracking for a week just to yeah. check where I am, like... I probably wouldn't, but once yeah. again, if you really want to get it dialed in, then yes, for squash, I would I would do it. But. That's basically it. Just think of all like starchy root type vegetables. Yeah. Things that grow in the ground, I think, are the ones that you're gonna log like that. Um, so, but yeah, like we said, if it's not something you're eating every single day and you're not eating a ton of it, then I wouldn't worry about it. But if it is like a staple and it makes up a big portion of your plate, then yes, I would count it. Yeah. Okay, so Sandra will lead in. Another question. We have, hi Brad, when giving advice to clients gets repetitive, what keeps you motivated as a health and fitness coach? Good question. Yeah, I like that one. That's <laughs> I don't think really I've, original. I don't know, maybe, yes, I probably have been asked that before, but it was like, there's not many times I get asked a question that I haven't been asked before, and yeah. that one it may not have been, but I think I kind of have. Yeah. Um, but honestly, you just kind of have to, you know, you got to remember, why are you in this? You're in this to help people. And you got to understand that you put out a video, it doesn't mean every single one of your followers have watched that video, or maybe the follower just started following you. And yeah. so it's like, I am so blessed and so grateful to be in this position where I am that I actually have a following who listens to what I say and it's changing their lives. And I mean, I don't take that for granted. So yes, I'll get asked the same question, how to lose belly fat 50 million times, but it's getting, if it's getting them results and it's helping them get past the barriers that they're seeing in their life, I just remember what had happened to my life when I changed. So um, I just don't take it for granted. I, I'm very, very honored that you guys are asking your questions. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, this is the year 2016. These videos are new. Not everyone wants to dig through our 2009 videos, you know, to see what we said before. And things do change. They do change. So I think, you know, we're always continuing to learn and grow and change you know, the way that we do things and the way that we advise things. Yeah. So sometimes answers do change. Yeah. And that's why we keep asking or answering the same questions over and over without being annoyed by it because yeah, we're, it's, not, it's not that we're it's like, not a bad thing. We're lifelong students. So like yeah. what you saw me say in a 2012 video may have changed in 2016. And yeah. I think rather than uh, people out there saying you change your your bandwidth like you're jumping on this and that I think what you should be saying is congratulations for actually continuing your education and learning and experimenting and figuring things out because like I'm gonna say right now things that I said on this podcast probably in three years could change because yeah. different things come out new studies opinion. come out like you always have to be staying on top of the information that's out there and um, but I will say this one thing which you guys do have questions and you um, you want to find it out for yourself, go to liveleantv.com and in the search bar, I've showed you guys this before, just type in whatever question you have. Like say, whatever it may be, type in that keyword and there, I guarantee you there'll be something coming up on our search results in our Live Lean TV website that will help you with that. We'll have a video on it, we'll have a blog on it or something. Yeah. There's so much resources in that, guys. That website is five years in the making of putting content consistently for five years. So that's a valuable resource if you do want to find out your questions right away. Yeah, definitely, that helps. All right, we're almost at the end of the show, guys. Um, next question, last question of the show here. So let's get into it. 
from Reen. Reen on Snapchat says, I recently stumbled upon your 14 day lose fat quickly diet challenge because I've basically been watching all your videos in the past three days. It's a lot of videos <laughs> that's to consume in three days. Watching. I don't even know if that's physically possible. That's great. Yeah. Um, and I'm currently on day three, everything going great so far. Anyway, I was wondering if I can consume coconut milk during this challenge because I want to make my protein shake thicker. Okay. Um, so coconut milk, yes, you, we definitely love coconut milk. We use it all the time, yeah. but you do have to realize that it's very high in calories. Um, so you have to fit it into your diet instead of adding it on top if your goal is fat loss. So we're assuming when you say coconut milk, you're, you're referring to the canned coconut mm -hmm. milk. That's the, what we use. Yeah, because that's thicker and that's a lot more higher in calories, but it's good calories because it's coming from healthy fats. Uh, but if you're referring to like carton can coconut milk, it's going to be lower in that's calories. Lower in calories. Yeah. yeah. Um, hopefully you've watched the videos about how to calculate your macros and how important macros are to your results because I think especially for a lot of newbies they, they don't they start changing the types of food they're eating but they don't necessarily know how much to eat so you know if you knew your macros and you knew the macros of the amount of coconut milk you want to use you could see if that fits or if it blows you over you know if, and you don't want to have your calories too high if your goal is body fat loss or even body re recomposition because then you could be a little frustrated with the results. So. Yeah, so let's link that video up down below as well, that 14 day lose fat quickly. Okay, so that was the last question. Thank yes. you guys so much. Keep them coming and we will answer them on future episodes. Thank you guys. So uh, what's the QOTD? Um, yeah, okay, let's see. Question of the day if you we, don't, can't put that together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the question of the day for you guys, I would like to know, um, how many different diets have you tried? Have you guys done the ketogenic diet? Have you done paleo? Like, if you could list down in the comments below, we would like to know what have you guys experimented with? That yeah. would be interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching and hey! Live and lean. Live and lean. Love you guys. Bye. Bye.